Hi, this is Austin Saul, Group 12, Team Management, and the group consists of Roma Osteman, Austin Saul, which is myself, Leanne Deschops, and Washington Casquillo, and finally Cheyenne in the water. Now, the TV show we have is called The Golden Rays. It follows a team of superheroes and the struggles they face as a team. All right, the show is about like, a group of heroes that save the world, and the world has disasters and danger in it almost constantly. But the question is, who will save the people of this world when disaster does strike, and the people need help? Now, the answer is the Golden Rays. The Golden Rays are a team that was organized by the Golden Shroud because he was tired of just witnessing all the horrible things in the world and gather the group of people that can make a difference. And unfortunately, like any team that's out there, there's a leader slash manager. Now, and the people that follow them. There are always struggles when it comes to leadership, but it is a golden shroud's duty as a manager of the team to make sure that there is an open communication and direction that the team needs to accomplish the, the task at hand. Now, the team has a lot of responsibility in their hands and it is vital but the Golden Shroud uses each team member to the best of their ability to save the world. Now, the Golden Shroud, the uh, leader of the team, he's uh, basically like the manager of the group, makes sure everyone works together, makes sure everyone is happy with what they in front of them, or maybe just satisfied with the rest of the team members, and just overall have a positive experience or a positive out outcome to the rest of the world. Now, the Golden Shroud really likes to focus on short-term goals and that are attainable and helpful for the rest of the team. He does his best to implement different strategies and objectives, but overall this character shows technical and interpersonal skills with his management. Next we have Commander Cranium. Now, Commander Cranium has sometimes an issue with overconfidence and arrogance, but uh, Commander gets his instructions from the Golden Shroud, but he doesn't always listen. He sometimes does things his own way because of his arrogance, and it can sometimes go wrong. And though he does not follow tactical plans nor translate oper operational plans for the rest of the team, and the mission can basically be compromised because of that. He, now, if something would ever happen where one of the team members was slacking or maybe he felt like he was doing a little more work than the rest of the team, which sometimes happens in a manager setting, he will call out anyone and he will put himself in front of anybody that would question him, anybody that would uh, treat, sort of demean his pride. That's his biggest issue is pride. And sometimes that can be more or less like a curse on the rest of the team. Now it's coming, now it's going to his responsibility or job to make sure that he is integrated well into the team, to make sure he works together as a group. Now, Leopard, now he is basically the uh, blunt of most of Commander Cranium's attacks or insults. He has uh, some issue with keeping up with the rest of the team, but he always makes sure his tasks are done. But they're not always done when they should be. It will continue to grow and develop his confidence and his superpowers and improve as a teammate. Now, some of these improvements are in accountability, goal achievement, and in individual decision making. And his powers are up to par with the rest of the team members, and he knows it, but he wants to make sure that he can be the best he can be and not bring everyone down with him, while also trying to, to stick up for himself when the when Commander Cranium just dishes it out on him. Duke and Hex are basically the basically the peanut gallery of the group. They're they basically just focus on listening in and commenting when things don't go their way. But they will never speak up and talk about what needs to be done. Because all they care about is what affects them and not the entire team. Now Duke, he, he joined the team at the same time as Hex. And they have a very strong bond. But when the Golden Shroud gives him instructions, he seems to go along with Hex and say something in regards to the decision. Duke seems to follow Hex more than he does Shroud, but both Duke and 
tax fall in the group think mode. Sometimes cause issues with the team because they just go off do their own thing based on whatever they basically agree with each other on rather than what the golden shroud instructs them to do. Now, X, uh, Duke's friend, yeah, seems to enjoy undermining the shroud's instructions and leading Duke with with himself rather than having Duke listen to the golden shroud and follow his instructions. Now. He will eventually do what the shroud tells him to do. However, he always has something slick to say about it. And that can translate very poorly to the rest of the team. Undermining the shroud's importance and management skills by just com completely overthrowing whatever decision he makes and making his own. Now, due to these traits, it's hard to, for Hex to contribute to overall team strategies and goals in a positive and productive manner. And, doesn't quite understand the social responsibility that the team has and enjoys leading Duke around and talking more than saving the day. Hex will learn how to lead others and contribute to the culture of the group rather than try and undermine whatever Shroud's saying and try and make him try, try to become leader himself without actually having those skills to bring people together. All right, Mamba gets added to the group when she sees the group in action and decides to contact them. She's a great team leader and becomes the Golden Shroud's second command. She works well with the other team members and brings a uh, sort of unification to the group. But Mamba is great at uh, identifying a team member's individualism and utilizing it to the team's best advantage. You can think of her as some sort of mercenary that comes in, helps the team win out whenever they need it. And and the Golden Child respects her every, her skills, her management skills, her leadership skills, and her personal, her, and her personal background that she brings up with the team. Now, the very first episode, the team is in their base when they get an alert of two different events happening. And the one event is a cat stuck in a tree, and the other is a train that has lost its brakes and is hurling towards the city. Now, the Golden Child makes a call that the Train event is going to need more attention than the cat stuck in the tree. But eventually, the team will look at the cat after they rescue pastures and stop the train. But the team needed to brainstorm and come up with different solutions. So, Commander Cranium thinks that he can handle the train by himself. Leopard is happy to help in any way he can, though he's not as strong or as fast as the others. And, Complains about the Golden Shroud's decision, and Duke follows whatever Hex is saying. Now, got the cranium with his, or committed cranium with, with his arrogance, uh, with his arrogance, he makes it come up with a basic strategy for helping the train passengers in, in the city. But Hex and Duke are going about each other, complaining about whatever the Shroud's saying, and trying to work, work around ways to undermine his decisions. Now, Leopard might not be the strongest member of the group, but he is happy to help Golden Shroud in any way and improve his own skills. Now, now the team, after all this bickering and fighting, finally comes together after the Golden Shroud uses his management skills to communicate and empathize with the group. While getting to understand the importance of the situation. Now, episode two, the train is hurling towards it's doom, and the team finally arrives to the scene. Though the Golden Shroud needs the team to be cohesive and ask Commander Cranium to use his strength to attempt to stop the train by pushing it in the opposite direction. He tells Duke and Hex to use their speed to grab the end of the train and pull the train while running as fast as they can. And he and Leopard will attempt to get all the off the train, though Duke and Hex uh, get upset because they don't believe that their skills are being utilized to the best of their ability, while Commander, while Commander Cranium grasps about his importance on the team. But in the end, the Golden Trials uses a commitment control to emphasize unification of the group to save, to save the people on the train. The team stops the train and saves everybody on it. The team is finally back to headquarters after saving the train and everybody on it, and the in the cabinetry, of course. Now, 
Could come in a cranium was upset about his compensation and believes he deserved more because he was more important than the rest of the members of the group. This upsets Duke and Hex because they don't agree that he should get a raise and not them. And Commander Cranium then turns to Leo Pard and points out that he is the weakest member of the team and starts to talk about his insignificance to the team. Now, the Golden Shroud steps in and has to diffuse the situation, make sure that each group member feels important and makes them understand the importance of each other. Now, he informs Duke and Hex that they want to be if they want to negotiate the possibility of race, they need to start acting like team members. Now, after all that arguing and bickering in episode three, in episode four, the team here is knocked at the door. And Hex answers the door, and there's a woman who introduces herself as the Mamba. She tells Hex that she has been looking for people with similar abilities to herself, and she was hoping to join the team. Now, Hex invites her in and introduces her to the rest of the group. Instantly, Mamba can tell that there's a different culture here than that she is used to. The other members of the team introduce themselves. The Golden Shroud asks Mamba to sit in the other group and have a chat. Shroud starts the decision making process with the group and decides if they should allow Mamba to join the group. Now, after much discussion, the team finally decides to allow Mamba and expanding the group and making them a stronger team. Now, after Mamba joins the team, and after in episode four, now in episode five, after joining the team, he she has to adjust to the division of labor for their everyday activities. And Hex and Duke help clean around their home base. The Golden Shroud is working on paperwork for the previous adventures with Leopard. And Captain Cranium usually is on monitor duty on his own, but now that Mamba is around, he has help. When the Golden Shroud takes a break from the paperwork and he oversees how Mamba is assimilating with the group, and he actually notices that Mamba has a good emotional intelligence and is getting along swimmingly with the other team members. She is communicating well, and in return, they are giving her great positive feedback as the team is working on their daily tasks. But then, after everything is all said and done, the alarm sounds. And uh, Golden Shroud and his team are back to work. 